have some tech images here. The Sistrum, the Ankh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big tech. <laughs> big tech. Here's the big tech. Well, there so many of the, the alt history guys uh, on the interwebs, they're always saying, oh, you know, the Egyptians had electricity. I'm not sure about that yet. <laughs> you think they had electricity? Yeah, they had The thing is, they had the media that they have. And the one that we are caught up in and having to deal with is the digital now. Mm. And the one that the Paris exhibition was caught up in and had to deal with was the electric. And the one mm. that, you know, the mod early modern period had to deal with was the printing press. It's like we, we are uh, th this is this is where I was. I was going in the McLuhan fashion. We're always caught up by the tech that we're surrounded by all media. Mm. What, how did he put it? I forgot. All media work us over completely. All media, not just the ones we have mm. now, not just our AI media, not just, you know, our our electric media our streaming our television our radio all media so the the two mart that i was showing just a second ago or these onks or the architecture that all of that media is all going to be working us over and i mean so th therefore it's interesting that the commandment the exodus commandment has you know you're not to make graven images and adore them and worship them not to have strange gods before me it's do not let yourself get caught up in this media working you over. It's a warning then about what we're allowing to transform us that isn't God himself. Right. If that makes sense. Anubis. Anubis. <laughs> a dog-headed god of the, uh, of the underworld, Anubis. He pops up in a lot of places. In addition to exodus and deuteronomy pro prohibiting these graven images we have some psalms that have some very interesting language about why we shouldn't be got caught up with these particular kinds of images this is 113 not to us O lord not to us but to thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake lest the gentiles should say where is their god but our god is in heaven he hath done all things whatsoever he would. The idols of the Gentiles are silver and gold, the works of the hands of men. They have mouths and speak not. They have eyes and see not. They have ears and hear not. They have noses and smell not. They have hands and feet not. They have feet and walk not. They have hands and feel not. They have feet and walk not. Neither shall they cry out through their throat. Let them that make them become like unto them, and all such as trust in them. The house of Israel hath hoped in the Lord. He is their helper and their protector. Becoming like the machines that they're making. That, it was that passage I was thinking of when I was reading about the, the chat bots going bananas. And, <laughs> and, and, and thinking, they don't speak. It's like they have words, but speak but speak not. They have sentences, but think not. They have, it's like the temptation to think that these, this AI, which everybody, you know, it's like our tech friends keep saying, it's not really intelligent. It's not artificial intelligence. Yeah. It is pattern completion programs. The art that Torba is creating is not in fact drawing. There's no artist in there. It's a pastiche of lots of previous images. So, I mean, human artists obviously take models and model their work on previous work. And Egypt, Egypt, as we said, was very conservative in that sense that their art, you know, it's like you could date their art for thousands of years and it looks pretty much identical. Not completely, but, you know, there, there's a there's a grand sort of stability in their design forms. But, the temptation, I think this is this is what's interesting about it. the temptation that we have to think our art is alive and responding to us. The problem with AI, it's not responding. It's not capable. Like the the artist, artists are capable of responding. Artists can, art cannot. Mm. And someone asked me uh, a little while ago what I thought about uh, AI. I think it was KC. I said I, I don't like it. I gave a bunch of reasons why, but I I didn't like the idea that there wasn't any human element in it. Obviously, there is because the AI is create is created by humans. Right. But as you're describing uh, this effect, you know, uh, 
from the psalm. The experience of the world passing through an artist goes through all of their senses. Mm-hmm. God is saying that the heathen are essentially worshipping things that are made that don't have our five senses. They're dead mediums, whereas we are living mediums. We have input-output, but we're not dead. We're not completing pattern uh, pattern recognition problems, you know? <laughs> I'm uh, a good chat, <laughs> but what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you told me one day, Ah, oh, you're you're actually an AI chatbot, and you're being programmed through this like you know, you can kind of get to that level where you you wonder, oh my god, am I am I actually AI? Have I been programmed like this? Um, but then we don't have we don't have this input output mechanism. Human beings have revelations. We don't have programming. So f- from what you said in the psalm, God saying you you know the heathen become like the tools that they make they become like the machines they make you should not stay in the sensory stay in the human you know we've been given all of these different senses and so when we're making things the, the machines should reflect us uh not the other way around and then i'm in the the McLuhan problem of but th- the media is going to affect us it's going to work us over completely this this being the the twinned tension that I saw. Mm. So we have the artificial intelligence is the AI, and there's a, there's a reversal of that, a mirror image of that. I mean, McLuhan was always trying to get to the point where the word became flesh and dwelt among us, the actual incarnation. Mm. Artificial intelligence, incarnate when, art, <laughs> AI, AI. When God got, God got a body. <laughs> um, which, you know, could be through the word, which we now have words here. Now, you were talking earlier about the problem of, you know, if we can't even make, if we can't make any graven image, graving, the graven, the engraven there is um, interesting because as my friend Margaret Barker, who written about the temple tradition a great deal has meditated on this problem of the gra- engravings the gravings and she says in the hebrew that the word that god use is used in proverbs for example for the create creating is engraving the bounds right that there is a create a, a the, the graven part is a significant part of the artist's work um if we're not to make any graven images we're not a, presumably then supposed to write either i mean it's like at what level are we saying we're not supposed to make you shall not make graven thing nor the likeness of any things and at what point are Mm -hmm. are are written things the likeness of things i mean obviously there's a huge debate in christian art periods of intense iconoclasm when people get very very anxious about having made this stuff um and the 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 problem with the the feeling of being worked over by the media, it's going to be the writing, which I'm showing now, as well as the visual images. I'm, I'm surprised that Islam hasn't cre- had a moment of, you know, grapho, graphoconoclism, graphoclasm. Engraving is writing, right? So how, how have we not simply wiped out all literature, mass censorship of all efforts to describe God? Because, of course, he's indescribable. Ban alphabets. Ban alphabets. Ban <laughs> going to ban the alphabet. As you know, 4,000 years later, we're using all these emojis. Are you kidding me? We're doing graven images constantly. It's this comparison of the emojis with the, the hieroglyphs. The hieroglyphs are graven in the rock, literally. Mm. How is this prohibition not against all media? And then the opposite being, well, but we are, you know, called... Bezeliel is is given instructions, pattern, blueprint for making the tabernacle and the ark, which Indiana Jones will find mm-hmm. in the movie, surrounded by graven image, graven things. Um, what as 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 you started to solve, it's like what kind of warning is the is the commandment meant to be? And I think that the psalm was helpful to me because you're worrying about this. They have you are attributing to them life they don't have. There's there's mm-hmm. another psalm that's um, one thirty four just similar um where you're praising god as creator praise ye the name of the lord O you his servants praise the lord you that stand in the house of the lord in the courts of the house of your god praise ye the lord for the lord is good sing ye to his name for it is sweet for the lord hath chosen jacob unto himself israel for his own possession 
for I have known that the Lord is great and our God is above all gods. That plural again, very, very troubling. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, he, I don't know why I would be worried about that. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, he hath done in heaven and earth, in the sea and all the deeps. He bringeth up clouds from the end of the earth. He hath made lightnings for the rain. He bringeth forth winds out of his stores. He slew the firstborn of Egypt from man, even unto the beast. He sent forth signs and wonders in the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants. He smote many nations and slew mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Basan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for an inheritance, for an inheritance to his people Israel. Thy name, O Lord, is forever, thy memorial, O Lord, unto all generations. For the Lord will judge his people and will be entreated in favor of his servants. The idols of the Gentiles are silver and gold, the works of men's hands. They have a mouth, but they speak not. They have eyes, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. Let them make them be like to them and every one that trusteth in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion who dwelleth in Jerusalem. I mean, there's a constant sense that he's the living God. Now we have Indiana Jones, the presence. Um, that the Lord, you know, the, the, the God of Israel, is, he's a living God, whereas the gods of the Gentiles, of so the Pharaoh, you know, the Egyptians are dead things or not, they're not live, right? They're not dead. They, they, they have had no life. They've had no breath. They have no, they're, go ahead. They're inanimate. Yeah. It's really quite simple. Don't worship your tech. But <laughs> the, the fear that the imagery creates so that, you know, it's like, it's so bad to have images at all that we're going to destroy all of them. Well, it, it's not clear that that's the, the extent to which we're meant to take our tech classm techoclasm <laughs> i mean we say iconoclasm as if images are the only problem but it you know the ai it's like we should we be destroying that tech because we may be tempted to worship it and expect that adore it right and expect that it will give to us the things that we ask mm -hmm. and will be predictable in the way that we wish it were and not alive not at, and I, you've been pointing to this in your in your meditations all along, in relationship with God who is alive. It's a similar problem to when people hold up the Bible and they say, look, this is it. You're right. It's the, it's, that's the technology. Yeah, look at all these words. With the hieroglyphs in it and the pictures. Yeah. And it's been graven by the looks of the one you're holding up there. Is that being graven? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's a nice duet reams, you know, with soft cover. There's a little printing. Yeah. That well, counts. it's 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 not so little, so I can actually see it. Um, <laughs> I get I have a lot of these books. I have lots and lots and lots of translations, and I like the Douay Reams because it has resonance, right? The worship of yes, I mean people can certainly make an idol of this book. So God isn't that book. No, God is amazingly God. As you're describing this, and also I'm thinking about the the difference in the approach that we have to art and to the technology that we're creating to our machines, including books. Mm -hmm. Muslims have a different relationship to this technology. Sure. We're not picking up the Bible and saying this, this artifact itself is, is God. I think this is the issue with, uh, with, with Christians and with Christianity. We're creating art and why we're, we're making everything that we're making is because God isn't stuck inside the pages of that book, and that's the only place that we can find him. He's emerged into human flesh. He's emerged out into the world, right? Mm. He's not stuck in there. He's not stuck in lettering. It's certainly possible to make of books your idols mm. and expect them to speak back to you. I dare say, based on our internet conversations, you're alluding to the Sola Scriptura problem. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> Which is, as you know, as we've d touched on, I think, and is probably predictable for, for our McLuhan educated audience now, it's an artifact of the printing press that the printing press as a technology had a horrifying effect on, on Christians because suddenly they have a different relationship to the books than, than when mm. they were handwritten and physically, you know, humanly, intimately, physically. It's like, I don't think you should be pr buying printed books, right? These machine-made things, very, very bad for you. You should get only handwritten books, manuscript form. 